Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers coming at you from Inks Lake State Park in the hill country of Central Texas. Sharon, what are your thoughts about Inks Lake State Park? This is one of the clearest lakes I have ever been to that was not spring fed. Well, the it feeds off the Colorado. It's actually, I think they dammed the Colorado yes. to create a chain of lakes. Yes. <clears throat> and so I think there's one that comes to here and then this one goes to LBJ. And then LBJ goes down to Lake Travis, which is for Austin. The water supply. The water supply. And uh, we're not that far from Austin. About but an hour. I'm guessing about an hour. Or, matter of fact, our next park is actually in yes. Austin. So hour, hour and a half. And so, um, this is a very popular, extremely popular park. There is an alert that says on the weekends, be ready because when it reaches a certain number, they're going to turn people away. Unless you have reservations. Unless you have reservations. But the swim area, there's a huge no wake um, area. And this is one of those lakes that it doesn't just feed the state park. It's, it's a huge lake. And, uh, but there's a huge, for the park, there is a marina, there's, there's boat launching, there are two fishing piers, a lot of stuff. The swim area, it's a huge no wake area. The store rents paddle boats and canoes and kayaks. kayaks and, and so, um, it is an extremely popular park. And, um, there are parts down there that are just water sites. We're here. Uh, in in the summer where you in really July, need mid July you need air conditioning as a matter of fact the people next door here have a tent and they have a window unit uh, in their tent because you need AC yes uh, here but anyway um, but those water only sites there are some of those that are absolutely gorgeous they are so pretty my guess is that's kind of where the park started was down there and then it became so popular they just kept adding sites and so there are a couple of things we do want to address. Um, it is a very popular park. Um, guys, with any park, your impression is based on a snapshot. It's a snapshot of when you were there and the site you had. And so we, um, there are a lot of great things about it. We've had a good time yes. here. Yes. We've gone fishing, we've gone swimming. We've just said it. Matter of fact, one of the park hosts came by today and said, y'all are exceeding our level of relaxation you know <laughs> so we've had a great time sitting out in the mornings and you know we've had a great time but there are some things we want to address so that you're aware the site construction seems almost haphazard when you look at the map it, it seems like it makes sense but then when you get here it's it it, it in, in 3D, it doesn't give the same appearance as it does on the map. We'll just say that. it's The it, campsites, there's no definite end to one and beginning to the next one. And depending on where you're from, that may be what you're used to. But the water sites only, it's it's more what we're used to. And, well, and so we just want to kind of address that. Um, the restrooms. The restroom situation <laughs> is something that... Um, I'm not sure how many functions these there are over 300 campsites in this particular park and the one closest to us there's one right here that's being renovated but it's not open yet actually i think it's being built it's, well i think they took down the one that was yes. there and they've yes. they've rebuilt it so yes uh and so i walked over to the next one and i got there and there was a sign on the door that said that it was closed for service to go to the park store and so this was you know from our camping loop this is my third restroom to attempt to get to <laughs> and the park store you would think uh and it's you know on the outside where you can get to it but it was just like i guess you'd call it a family or a a, unisex. But it's I yeah mean, it's a it's unisex not... and so you go in and there's a toilet and a stall you can lock the door so you're not just oh but still that's for the cabins as well and so for a huge area you have one stall which is yeah there there are several areas in the park where there are porta potties and so that's not this is one of the higher priced parks in the yes. texas state park systems but it's so close to austin 
it's on this huge beautiful lake people are willing to come and but we want to let you know because we realize some of you may actually be coming to this area now some of the fun things that we have done that are really kind of cool and we want to show you just a brief clip of what we did at the fishery fish hatchery and longhorn caverns while we were at Inks Dam, we visited the Inks Dam National Fish Hatchery. This has an educational building, bird blinds, trails, etc. These plaques were um, at the Visitor Center, and you can find out different information. The man who saw us, uh, the man who worked there told us to come on in if we wanted to see some baby catfish. These in all the tanks in here are baby catfish and uh, they're at a hatchery they're just raising them. They've hatched them and they're raising them now. Um, in person you can see the little whiskers on some of them. Outside in a large holding tank were some full-size catfish that were to be transported this day. I don't remember the parks they were being taken to, but they were large and going to other parks. Um, I don't know if the little whitish ones are albino or if they're just a light-colored fish at the bottom of this tank. Those are all catfish down there. Okay, this is Longhorn Cavern State Park and if you're not interested in caverns, skip across uh, two and a half minutes. To get into the caverns, you do have to go down a series of pretty steep steps and then this is the last thing you see before you uh, actually enter the cave. And a couple of things are really unique about this cave. One is there are a lot of crystals just throughout and it's because of how the cave was formed. The cave was formed by a river and so you have these inverted potholes. That's the ceiling. And you also see these strident areas throughout where you can see how the water was just uh, forging its way through. So you don't have a lot of stalactites and stalagmites that you see in most caves. You do have some, but not nearly as extensive as a lot of these really kind of unique formations. And so a lot of this is just giving you some images from in the cave. And there are a number of natural entrances that have been closed for various reasons. It got its name Longhorn Caverns because when it was being excavated by the CCC they found a lot of remains of Longhorns because they fell through some of those natural entrances. Uh, this section to me really did look like what I would imagine an underwater cave looking like. Uh, just such smooth surfaces it was it was really fascinating. I am going to tell you that in my opinion the entrance fee is a bit steep. Uh, it's $17.50 plus tax and so with my Texas Park Pass I got 10% off of that which was $1.75 but with tax it was still right at $17. Um, but I'm glad I went. But you do need to know it is a bit, a bit pricey in my opinion. If, especially if you're trying to take a family in there. Um, there are, this is a cave where they actually do turn the lights off. So you can see how dark it is, that you really can't see your hand in front of your face. Um, and so it's, it's, you walk, once you're in the cave, you're walking a little over a mile. So it's a mile and a half to get down there and everything. There are things you can do at this park that are free, and this is one of them. This, I believe, was Sam Bass Lookout and Lookout Tower, and it was built by the CCC in the 1933, I believe. And so it is, uh, it's just a, I had fun climbing up there, so if you got little kids, you know they're going to have a ball climbing up there and doing the lookout thing. 
So there is like a little museum in the bottom of this where you can go in and read some about Texas history and the area. And then um, you can come up and climb up on top of this. There are some trails around. This is a Texas State Park that does not have RV camping. Uh, there is camping, but there are no RV sites. But uh, if you're in the area, it is worth the visit, whether you just come for the day use. And there's a gorgeous picnic area on your way up there as well. This is the front of that lookout tower that was built in 33 and the new headquarters. And once again, if you have mobility problems, it is a cave. It is slippery and uh, awkward footing at times. So as you can see, those were really kind of fun stops that was to make. Great fun. And if you're coming here, the hatchery was four miles from the park entrance, I think, and the caverns is just six miles. So yes. definitely worth your stop. And we are we have had a good time here. We don't want to leave the impression that we haven't had any fun here. We have, but we do try to be really transparent on our channel and we try to let you know there are parks we absolutely love in the state of Texas. This is one that we may or may not visit again. And a lot of people have said, you will love Inks Lake. I've heard nothing but great things about this place. So, so it could be just us. Once again, like I said, it's kind of that snapshot. Had we gotten a different campsite near a restroom that was working, we probably, and it was kind of where it was clear that it was a campsite, we would have a different view of this park. But based on where we are right now, we want to be honest with you and let you know if I'm back down this way, I'm not sure this is the park that I would stay at. I would drive a little bit further and go to South Lana. We loved that park. Yes, or maybe even McKinney, McKinney if you needed to be yeah, in, in Austin. Austin, which is actually where we're going. So. But anyway, lots of people bringing, you know, if you have a boat, you have kayaks, you have tubes, this is a great, great water lake. And yes, I, one of the reasons I think the sites are set up the way they are is to maximize the number of waterfront sites. Yes. Um, but it's kind of like this end. They gave up being a state park and started just slotting people in. And that's and if that's what a lot of people want, then this is this would be a great park for you. And they're not really slots. We have trees. We have now shade. we have we really do have pretty good shade on the RV, and that helps with the air conditioner. And there are some sites with no shade. And so, anyway, we've had a really good time here, but um, we're looking forward to our next stop. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Two tired teachers. teachers.